Welcome to Dialogue, sir. Thank you. Thank you very much. Son of my closest friend asked me to ask you a question as to how he can be successful because he has started to show tremendous interest in the animation industry. He is a major of a computer science, very much like what you did. So yes. uh, how could a Chinese kid be successful? The only thing that I could share is my personal experience. I started with computer science, and, uh, but I had a passion for drawing, I had a passion for art. So I wanted to combine the two ideas, and that's when I found technology being my biggest ally. That's when I discovered computer animation, where I could use both my technical side and my creative side. So when I found that, I went after my dream. I just worked really hard. I started to work on my projects, my personal projects at first, creating short movies, projects that I, stories that I wanted to tell. Um, and uh, once I did that, people started to see my work. And little by little, people invited me to do more work. And that's how it all started for me. So personal interest uh, is the best teacher for one's career development. Is that true? Yes, I think so. I think your personal drive, uh, your, will your willingness to work hard, your willingness to just to really go after your dream and never give up, because it's not easy. It's not like you know, you're know you going to work hard and you're going to succeed. Not necessarily. You're going to have to work hard, fail, work even harder, and continue to push forward. So it's persistence uh, and you know you have to persevere, persevere, you have to work hard and also you have to be able to work on things that you love, stories that you want to tell because that will, people will see the passion of your work. We used to hear a lot of stories about drug cartels in Latin America and mm -hmm. countries uh, between those countries and the United States of America, but you are absolutely a beautiful exception in that you are such mm -hmm. a brilliant example of uh, animated films and you are a household name for millions. Now, why did you decide to, uh, to move from uh, Brazil to the United States uh, where uh, you pursue your dream? How did that promising land start to build up your expectations and success? Well, I, when I went to the United States, I had no expectations. I went in just to follow my dream. I decided to make the change because uh, I moved to the United States 23 years ago. And what I wanted to study, I didn't have that study in Brazil at the time. Uh, so I decided to come to New York to go to university. So when I went to the university, that's when I found my passion. Uh, and things started to happen naturally because um, showing my work and when I worked hard and when I started to make my short animated movies, uh, people started to see. So when it was time for me to possibly go back to Brazil, they invited me to stay and to work. And that's when I went to work to, at Blue Sky Studios. And that's where I've been since then. So it's my first job in the US and it's my, since then it's been my only job. Was your experience with the Blue Sky very exciting? Very exciting, because when I started the company, I only had 20 people. So it was very the beginning of it. So we all shared dreams. We all wanted to make movies. We all wanted to, so we had that big, young passion and um, idyllic future for us. And, um, and actually, we realized that dream. Um, you know, it wasn't right away. It took us uh, you know, maybe 10 years to, to do our first animated movie, which was Ice Age. So, um, but since then, we worked very hard, and we're very, but we never lost sight of our goal, which was to make animated movies, to do what we want to do, to be creative, and to create good product, not only for ourselves, but for everybody. And that's how it all began. What's the message you want to convey to the world audience through Ice Age? Well, my movies, um, I tend to like to convey messages that I find it's wholesome and important for not only for, for children, but for the entire family. So our movies are event movies, what we call, that you can not only get children to come, but adults to come as well. That's amazing, absolutely, yeah. because I was fascinated with uh, real. Right. Uh, uh, it's fantastic. Blue, I mean, <laughs> it's yes. very interesting, very funny bird. It's, it's, it's a combination of elements, I think. Uh, first of all, I think you try to write a sophisticated script that you have you know, messages that will work for families. Like you talk about family values. Um, in some of my movies, I talk about the environment, which is something that people you know, nowadays, it's very common you know, people to like to, to talk about that. So messages that I think that when you watch a movie, you have a lot of fun because there's a lot of you know, colors and music and animation is fun to watch. But also you leave the movie with a message in your head. And usually those messages are good values, you know, the, the, the importance of friendship, the importance of family, and also the importance of the environment. Your childhood was eventually defined by your passion for animated films, but right. what was your parents' attitude and response? It's interesting because, um, you know, I grew up uh, traveling a lot in Brazil. Brazil is a big country, similar to China. 
uh, we have a very continental dimension. So, and it's very diverse. You know, like similar to the regions of different regions of China, we have different regions of Brazil. And I was lucky enough to be exposed to that because my dad was in the military, so we travel quite a bit. So uh, I was able to visit different places. So my childhood was marked by a lot of like beautiful places that I went to with a lot of nature um, and, and different cultures that sparked my imagination to just wanted to go beyond those places. And, um, and I grew up like any other kid in my time watching the Disney movies, uh, watching TV. I love Charlie Chaplin. I would mm. love to watch <laughs> the silent movies because for me that was the first, the beginning of animation. Well, let's take a quick look at the uh, silent motion pictures uh, like uh, those produced by Charlie Chaplin. Mm. I believe you, you can think of uh, some uh, similarities between the way he acted and uh, the animated films. I mean, he's funny. He's a uh, yeah. Well, what he done, what he has done beautifully, he found a balance of representing a character. So he was a character himself. Right. And, uh, and he made a very good use of physical comedy and slapstick comedy, at the same time with exaggeration. Something that was, back then, was very unheard of. Being able to do those like prank falls or those like big falls or so, those big movements, was something that I think animation got inspired by. If you look at an animated movie, the, one of the principles of, anima of a good animated movie is the, the art of exaggeration. You know, so you can push the emotion, you can push the moment, and that's what brings comedy to it. So he was the expert of that as, a, as an actor, and I, I, and I love that. And, uh, and uh, many, many more came, and many more did that at the time. And it always started with the principle of, you know, almost like a circus, you know, where you were clowns, or you were like, you know, that is kind of like the essence of the, the early comedy. Well, you, you put your finger on a very interesting point. Uh, that's the charm of uh, animated films, uh, the exaggeration. But mm -hmm. don't you think sometimes you may blow the relationship between black and white out of proportion so that you create extremism? I mean, yes. uh, the cowboy-like image, uh, <laughs> like quick draw to kill your enemy. Well, it's interesting because animation has the two things. You have the exaggeration, which brings you physical comedy, and you have the subtlety. The subtlety is more difficult than the index exaggeration because when you have a moment that you want to convey emotions, and that's where I think the animation has an advantage of general movies in general, because we play with both ends. We play with the exaggeration and the subtleties of emotions. So when you play a character that's like as fun as something like Blue, or even the squirrel in Ice Age Scrat, where he just goes running after the nut, and uh, you, know, you play exaggeration there. But there's a moment that everything stops, everything pauses, and all you see is their eyes. All you see is what they're feeling, and that's, very magical in animation when you stop those moments. The same way that you have fast-paced, fun animation for people to see, you have slow and almost steady moments that allows you to express a true emotion of sadness or happiness. And, and I think that's the right beauty of animation, the contrast. Exactly. Walter Disney has brought a lot of fun to millions of Chinese yes. kids whom I believe are being seduced by the beauty of animation. For example, the online games uh, mm -hmm. uh, let so many people, young kids, get addicted with the uh, anim animated figures. Mm -hmm. um, do you think uh, that uh, augurs very well for the future of mankind? Because uh, young kids uh, will follow their personal hobby very closely and they will be fascinated continuously with the animation films like those you produce right. so that they will move in the correct direction so that the innovation and creativity in this uh, huge industry will create a lot of fun for young kids. Yeah, I, th I believe that we are revisiting uh, what we call the golden age of animation, like that we, we, we noticed back in the days when Disney had those beautiful movies like Bambi, uh, Dumbo, Pinocchio, those movies that inspired uh, and created a generation of animators that, you know, became, um, like for us, they became our heroes, our inspiration. But not only um, you know, at Disney, but other artists as well, you know, Miyazaki, for example, from Japan also uh, inspired a lot of us. So, and, and, and then from that point on, animation developed into many different ways, you know, in games, for example, animation developed very strongly there. Like at first, games were very simple. Now games are very sophisticated with a lot of emotions as well, a lot of feelings, you know, and games are becoming movies eventually. What are those things that have inspired you and impressed you most uh, when you talk about Miyazaki from the, uh, the Japanese animation industry? It's imagination. It's the imagination. Yes. Uh, he managed but it seems that those in Asia uh, could not have a very rich imagination. Is that a racial discrimination? Um, I think that um, what I see, you know, and what I experience when I'm here, 
I think there's imagination everywhere. It was interesting because I was um, at a panel a couple of days ago at the MPA and, and there was a bunch of children that came up and they did a beautiful speech in perfect English, which was like incredible. Perhaps my stereotype, the perceptions are being corrected by the pursuit of millions of kids here in China. I think the next gener you know, in, uh, the generation nowadays, they have so much a access to information and that sparks more creativity. But even if you go back, you know, like, you know, uh, uh, you know the, the culture, for example, the Chinese culture is so creative, so beautiful, the way that you do. Are you talking about you know, the monkey king? Have you heard of I, Monkey I King? I heard about it, you know, and I was very curious about that story because you know you, you look know, like a Monkey King yeah, in your I could industry. Yeah, a Monkey King. Yes, I have a yeah. lot of monkeys in my movie, so <laughs> <laughs> so it's like it's very. Um, I find it. I find creativity everywhere I walk into. I find creativity in the colors. I find creativity in the shapes of buildings. I find creativity in the way that people express themselves. I find creativity in the language. I find creativity everywhere, you know. And so I think that is just how you perceive creativity. You know, maybe if you say about um, Americans um, have the creativity of the movie making, maybe, but I think that you have that here too. So it's just a matter of how you channel creativity to achieve what you really want to achieve. What did you see here? Uh, did you do any homework about my country before you came here for the very first time? It's a shame, isn't it? Yeah, it's my first time here. It's funny because my movie's been here for many times. Yeah. All my movies made it to China. I'm one so of your big fans. Yeah, I'm a 100% director here in China. Yeah. So <laughs> <laughs> but it's my first time here. I always wanted to come to China uh, uh, because I, I find it it's a very intriguing and, 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 and booming, you know, exciting market. You know, not only in terms of like the movies, but in terms of like the vibrancy of the culture and how the culture is becoming more and more accept it. You know, it's the first time that, for example, uh, I was having this conversation with my daughter. I have a 16-year-old daughter and, um, and we are talking about that she's preparing to go to college and we're talking about studies and all that. And, and, and she said, like, well, I'm thinking about learning Mandarin. And I said, oh, that's very good. That's you know, amazing. That's, that's, it's, I would never expect my daughter to, uh, or anybody, and when I looked at where, where, where did she get the inspiration for uh, Mandarin learning? Because all the schools now in the United States offer that class, you know, and she finds a future. I got to deliver this important message to my yeah. audience, uh, that it, the, the, those guys in the United States are learning Chinese. Learning Chinese, you know, and uh, from for the commercial early reasons? Age, it's for world reasons. You know, we live in a world that we have to communicate with each other. We live in a world that our movies or our products go everywhere. Like, for example, a movie like Rio is not made for Brazil. It's not made for the United States. It's made for the world. Mm. And we might, you know, and China might be our biggest, biggest market, you know. So it's not a movie. It, it, the boundaries, like the, the borders are, are much shorter now. Like there's not, you cannot say that you live in a bubble. You cannot say that you live in one place. You live in the world. And I think that people perceive that. And when you see in my kids' schools the, that, you know, they want to learn, you know, Mandarin over learning, for example, Spanish. Mm -hmm. The idea of uh, animation knows no boundary, but I have to leave you there for the moment. You are watching Dialogue with Mr. Carlos uh, Sandania, a very famous Brazilian-American director of animated films. We'll be back in a short while. Stay with us.